turn it over to Sister Rose. Let's give her a hearty amen as she comes. We're glad for you to be here tonight. The Lord is good. He continues to bless us in spite of ourselves. And I thank him for that. It's a privilege to be here, to worship him in spirit and in truth. He loves us more than anybody in the whole world, and we couldn't ask for more. I'm coming to you from the 20th chapter of St. Matthew. Don't forget the fast this week. Is it Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday? Don't forget. All right. Uh, 20th chapter of St. Matthew says, For the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is an householder, which went out early in the morning to hire laborers into his vineyard. And when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, he sent them into his vineyard. And he went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the marketplace and said unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right I will give you. And they went their way. Again he went out about the sixth and ninth hour and did likewise. And about the eleventh hour he went out and found others standing idle and saith unto them, Why stand ye here all day idle? And they said to him, Because no man had hired us. He saith unto them, Go ye also in the vineyard, and whatsoever is right, that shall, that shall you receive. I want to preach to you a little while tonight. The old people used to tell us when we were young that an idle mind is the devil's workshop. It truly is. Anytime, here's this man, he's going out and listen to the point, what time he went out. Early in the morning, he went out. Most of y'all sleep. He said, I want a job. You have to get up before 9 o'clock. People that get up early, the old saying it says the early bird catches the worm, and it's true. But if you lay around all day long and say, I'm going to look for a job at 9 o'clock in the morning, nobody wants you. So he said early in the morning he went out and found laborers, and he sent them into the vineyard to work. And so when I thought about that, I thought, how many blessings do we miss because we're not early enough, being on time, being, being before time to receive something. So... <laughs> When he said he went out four times, in fact, and he found people idle, standing, just standing around. He, every time he saw somebody idle standing, standing around, he sent them into the vineyard. And so if you listen to the last set that he came to, they said, we stand here because no man hires us. Well, if no man's coming there, then you go where the man is. Because being idle doesn't give you anything. It's just an empty space where you are. Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> but I, I, honestly, that so many times we stand there and we're waiting for something, but some things is not coming because you wait for them. You got to go after them. Everything is not going to come to you. And so if I want God to do something for me, I must make an effort to do something. At least put forth an effort. These people just said nobody, no man came to us. Well, then find a man that you can go to. And that I'm going to have what God told me I can have. And so as I looked at that, I thought, how many people have gotten in trouble simply from the fact they're just standing around doing nothing? As sure as you're busy, the devil don't have time to talk to you. As sure as you're praying and reading the word and, and seeking God, he don't have time. He can't get in because your mind is on everything but him. It's not just empty, just standing there. So when I looked at the word idle, it means lacking worth or basis. Not occupied or employed. Not occupied or employed. Shiftless. To run at low power and often disconnection. Usually so that power is not used for useful work. So if I don't take that which I have and really get out there and say, I'm going to use what God has given me. He may not have given you everything uh, as somebody else, but he gave you something. If you can get people to recognize that every one of us have something. A lady, a man was in the a prayer line this morning. She said, we want to know what our purpose is. 
Well, number one, before you even go to God for anything else, your purpose was to serve God. Was to live for him. That's what every person was created for. Every person that's on this planet, you were brought here for the purpose of serving God. Oftentimes, people take other paths and go other places, but that's the original. That's, that's what you're supposed to do. So you got to ask yourself, how idle are you? The reason why you can't seem really to get through with God because you just got this nothing going on. I would hate to go up in some people's mind. You know why? I think you come out crazy. Because, I mean, it's just totally blank. Nothing's going on. Nothing. They're just there. And they look dumb. You know, I, I, ain't nothing going on. I'm not worried about it. Uh, one time I was watching years ago a uh, little house on the prairie, and this 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 uh, was it the man or the woman said said to somebody, "I'll give you a penny for your thoughts," and she said, "Don't be so extravagant." <laughs> a penny for your thoughts, and that's extravagant. Think about it. So where are you at? Where does it apply to you that you're not out there doing something? There's a lot of good doors open out there. It's whether we go and find them. Make yourself available to do it. I'm going to plan this. I'm going to get up early. I'm going to do what I got to do because that's the only way the devil ain't going to have to sit there and talk to you. You know what you say? Well, I ain't got no job. These folks said no man hired me. He said go into the vineyard. Excuse, excuse. You can get there if you want to. But if you sit around with an idle mind with nothing in it, just thinking, thinking, thinking. After a while, the devil loves that. That's why he says the devil's workshop. He can do a lot of stuff there with an idle mind because nothing else is there. So why don't I go in and say, ain't nothing going on. Let me go in and do something. And you as a person got to say, you know, I got to get up and make something happen. I'm not going today like I was yesterday. Where can I go today that will bring me some benefit of some sort? No matter what's going on, I don't care how many times I was turned down. I don't care how many places I went. I am going to stand up and today is my day. That's the place you have to go. Today is my day. And if you don't do that, you won't have a day. You won't have one. It'll be just like yesterday. You determine if I get up tomorrow, what am I going to do? I'm going to find me something to do. I don't want to just sit around. Just sitting around for no apparent good reason. See, I don't may be used in reference to persons that move lazily or without purpose. Eh? I don't know what I'm going to do. You need to know what you're going to do. You need to understand what I'm supposed to do at this time in my life and where am I supposed to be. <laughs> if you don't do that, everybody that doesn't understand purpose, they are so empty. You got to understand that I'm here because God brought me here and I know I have a purpose. There's not a person sitting on this pew that don't have purpose. It's whether or not you're functioning in it or not. That's where the issue is. Are you functioning in your purpose? I bet if I went over this room and I said, so what's your purpose? He said, I don't know. You know, I never thought about it. You never thought about it? Purpose. What am I supposed to be doing right now? Why did God bring me to such a time as this? Why is it that I'm spending time with God, but my mind's really not on him? I say I'm spending time, but really my mind's just blank. Going nowhere. Empty minds. See, the devil loves you standing around doing nothing. He loves that. Go over and get them. Look at that. Just standing there. Life is just nothing. Come day, go day, God sends Sunday. And I just don't know. Well, do you have something to be in every Christian that is burning inside for what else can I do? What else can I do? And so if you look for something to do, you'll find more. That's what Matt and, and Denver be around the house sometime and, and, and they done done the routine thing and they standing back. Why don't they find something to do? 
Is there anything else? Yeah, it's something else. I went in my bathroom this afternoon, I guess it was yesterday, and the blinds on the door, dirty. I looked at it, I thought, does that look like dirt to me? So I went over and run my finger on the blind. I thought, I don't believe this. And they standing around. <laughs> look for it. See what else is there that I need to look for. I told one, I said, you got to say something tomorrow about these blinds. They're filthy. We're eventually going to find it. And so, as a matter of fact, how did you see that? <laughs> one of us sat down and looked at a mirror because I'm a mirror person. I got mirrors everywhere. And, and she, is that smudge on that mirror? Is that, mirror? that mirror got a smear in it. And, Matt, and, so, and so now I find Matt doing this. <laughs> Gotta clean that mirror. <laughs> so it's important for you to understand what is my purpose for right now. Now that down the road, there's going to be other things that call you to those things. And they're going to make, a, 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 at that point, you're beginning to graduate. You're beginning to grow. And you're moving from this level over to the next one. So everybody should want to be busy. Everybody should want to be busy. So I thought that when the Lord comes back, the scripture says, blesses the man that when he comes, he finds him doing not sitting down. No, doing. What are you doing? Are you busy for the kingdom? What are you doing every day of your life that reflects something you've done for the kingdom of God? And so if I, if I don't push myself, if I don't get up, if I don't love to work, laziness, my grandma used to say all the time, laziness will kill you. It's the truth. Lazy people will die sitting down, fat, and doing nothing. You have to move. One thing you find out real soon in life that God made our bodies to move. Not to just sit, but to be up and around doing what we need to do. And so if I'm not busy, what am I doing? If I, spent, if I didn't plan a good day today, what did you get? Because we need goals every day. What's my goal today? What am I going to accomplish today? Where am I going for today? We need that. We need it. You need to get up and say, you know what? I got to do something about where I am. And you know what I found out? People who sit around idle, that's where your biggest gossipers are. They don't have a life. They don't have a life. And so all the time, all they do is, oh, you, you said what? What is that? Oh, okay then, yeah. Oh, did you, oh, can you believe that? They love to do that. They have nothing to do. So they sit around, they gossip about people, talk against people, and say things they ought not because they won't get involved in something good. You know what I found out? You don't have no time to gossip if you're busy. You don't have time to listen to somebody telling you nothing if you're busy. But if you don't get busy, you just sit around and talk about, oh, all day long. I thought about, I kept thinking about what she told me. I thought, wow. Get up. You don't have time. It takes time to listen to gossip. It takes time for somebody to come and tell you some story about somebody. Forget that garbage. Forget it. See, this is what he says. He told the children of Israel, thou shalt not go up and down as a talebearer among thy people. Neither shall thou stand against the blood of thy neighbor, I am the Lord. He said, don't make it a point to go up and down over here and over there talking about other people's business. Six months to take care of your business, six months to leave mine alone, that takes care of a year. So I'm not going to tell it takes a lot of time for you just to work your business. But I got to sit over here and tell somebody, I'm, I know, I know I could do better than that if I was in that place. No, you couldn't. You couldn't do the job I'm doing tonight. God had to call people to do this job. Yes. If he doesn't call you to do it, you better not get you a little briefcase and go nowhere. Because I can tell you without a doubt, you will be going right back, running back to the place you left, and God didn't tell you to do it anyway. But find something good in life, something uh, that's really giving me some benefits as well as somebody else. So I'm going to work hard. 
Give it everything I've got. And so that people remember you because you were a hard worker. Because you were always looking for the next thing you could do. I, I am convinced some of you have bad work ethics. Because you go to a job and, and people that really like to work, when they finish what they're doing, they'll go do some help with somebody else. People that don't want to do nothing don't help nobody. As soon as I can get through with this and sit down and do nothing. Think about it. He said, a tale bearer revealeth secrets, but he that is of a faithful spirit concealeth the matter. So a tale bearer, let's go around. You know, I'm not supposed to tell you this, but listen, listen. And just running from place to place, talking, instead of getting something constructive in your life. If you get something really constructive, you'll be a happy person. Because I'm not sitting around doing nothing. Nothing will bore me more than nothing to do. <laughs> I never will have that. Because most of my time is praying and in the word. So I'm not going to be nothing to do. You get up and you work out and then you go. And then when prayer time comes, you go to prayer and, and you come out. And then you go, you wait a little while and maybe have dinner and then go back to prayer. So I don't have time for idleness. There's no time for it. You have to be looking off a heart to just say, say there's nothing to do. Nothing's going on in the world today. Nothing's going on in your world. You need to get up and make things happen and say, you know what? I want to be a person that is busy. Busy. I would rather be busy any day than just sitting down. Than any day. Because you get nothing from it. Nothing happened. Listen to what he said. The words of a talebearer are his wounds, and they go down into the innermost parts of the belly. Talebearers can tell stories on you until it hurts so bad. It can wound you so bad. And you got to learn how to stand up and grow a thick skin and move on and let them talk about you, whatever they want to do. But I'm busy. I don't have time. I don't have time for you to sit down here and I don't have time for, for me to feel sorry for myself when I can be busy. Don't spend a lot of time doing nothing. I think every person ought to take a little inventory of their life at the end of the day. What did you do that was worth something? That you can look at and say, you know, that was, that was a good thing. I'm glad I was able to accomplish that. You know, I've done this, I've done this, and these are things I thought I would have to take another week to, and all of a sudden I got to, you know what happens to people? They're procrastinators. Yeah. So what they could do today, they don't do it. And they say, I'll do it tomorrow. Well, tomorrow, the scripture says, don't put off the day for tomorrow. For thou knowest not what a day going to bring forth. Don't put it off for tomorrow because tomorrow has its own issues, has its own things. Take care of today. Then you won't be overwhelmed by the time you get to tomorrow because now the thing you should have done today, you left it undone. You say you're going to do it now, but now you've got a whole bunch of new issues today. So now you're overloaded. Just not enough time in a day. It's enough time. If you'll go ahead and do what you need to do on, when, it's, when, it's, when the time is there, do it. So I'm not going to put it off. I'm, and that's what they do with prayer. Oh, I need to go pray, but I haven't prayed yet. I'm going to slowfulness cast into a deep sleep. And an idle soul shall suffer hunger. You know why? When they should be out making a difference. They sitting there and I ain't got nothing to eat. Get up. Get up. Move around. The Bible says if you don't work, you don't eat. They sit around and I just, I don't have anything to eat. You got something to eat if you work. If you don't work, you ain't supposed to eat. That's what the scripture says. Get busy. Do some things to make things happen. And I'm going to get out here. I'm going to. Uh, involve myself in some things. I'm going to do some things that I haven't never done before, no matter what, so I can stay busy. There was a lady on TV the other day, I think it was on, on CBS News, and they had this woman on there, and she was 80-something years old, and she was playing tennis. I mean, volleyball, volleyball. And she was jumping up and and so, so the reporter said to her, so how do, you, how do you do this at your age? She said, you don't sit down. When you sit down, you die. But I thought I wouldn't have done that interview with all my arms and, and belly out, and it must have been enough wrinkles on there to chew up and spit back. And I'm thinking, at least cover it up. You can talk about being 80. 
You can talk about doing that. I thought I would never be seen on a camera in that condition. And she said, and I mean, right, that, you know, I still got some, got, some, uh, got some meat in here. But this is no meat on her arm. It's just skin, wrinkle, wrinkle skin hanging down, swinging. And she's talking about how I'm not going to sit down. If you want to live, you can live. I'm thinking, but put on a top. All these wrinkles everywhere, hanging here and hanging there, and it, it just a mess. Thighs or should be clapping hands with each other. You know what I mean? It's unbelievable. And I'm thinking to myself, but you don't have to come on the camera like that. Put on your something else and talk about how active you are. That's okay, but don't show you 80. Don't show it. Keep it covered up. Nothing attractive about it. And she was just going for it and just bragging about it. And I thought, but... I couldn't get past you needed to cover up some stuff. That's a lot of wrinkles. I mean, they are everywhere. And I'm thinking, oh, my God. And she said, oh, no, I will never stop this. I will never stop it because if you stop, you don't move anymore. You'll just be stuck in a place. So she's playing volleyball, I mean, with younger people than her and was beating them at it. I thought, that's all nice. I'm still saying, where's your clothes? Oh. I don't care what you say. I believe that you ought to keep going until you die. But keep going until you die covered up. He said, He that goeth about as a talebearer reveals secrets, therefore meddle not with him that flattereth with his lips. He says, don't, don't connect with them. Stay away from them. You don't want to do that. Stay away from them because a tail bearer will tell every secret in the book. They, gotta, they, gotta, they feed off of this stuff. I got to have some gossip to take to somebody. That's what they look forward to every day. But it's nothing to enrich their lives. Their lives are not enriched. You got to look at yourself and say, what have I done that I'm a better person as a, because I did it today? I, 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 I'm strengthened because I did that. I feel a sense of worth. People that have no self-worth is because they're not worth nothing. See, but when you start contributing to the kingdom of God and to people as a whole, your life changes completely. People that are depressed are people that have nothing to do. And so the devil talks to them. He tells them all these stories and all these lies. And since you're just sitting there, I might as well entertain you. And he sits down with you. And, and he talks to you because you, you're not, your mind's not on anything else. So you're a good mind to work with. And by the time he gets through planting all this stuff, negative stuff and lies and all this stuff, you know, I mean, you are messed up, truly messed up. Ask yourself, last week, what did you do? Well, I got up and got breakfast and sat down and I was just so tired. I'm thinking, tired of what? You didn't do nothing yesterday. You didn't do nothing the day before. You didn't do nothing three or four days earlier. Why are you so tired? It's amazing. And I think for the most part, this generation is coming on behind us. They seem to be tireder than we were. I mean, I look at them and think, God, y'all getting tired so quick. Well, when I was 50 years old, or 45 to 50 years old, I wasn't tired. I was moving around, doing things, taking care of my children, cleaning my house, making sure everything's in order, checking the drawers, keep everything in order. But now, this generation is tired. I mean, they so tired they can't think. On Mondays, it's probably the most difficult day for my house because we're getting ready for church and and, and and wherever we were to put on perfume and powder and all that stuff, it, some of them may be sitting there. And so Monday, and then the family's around the whole weekend, and so <laughs> you have more to do on Monday. And in my house, after Monday, there's nothing to do, really. <laughs> but I hear my girls saying, God, God, they come in my house, <laughs> so tired. And I said, what you tired of? Honey, we're getting old just like you. You say, yeah, but when I was y'all's age, I wasn't tired like that. <laughs> yeah, right, right. So I had a normal life, right? 
Yeah, that's true. But, but I, I'm almost amazed, and then I forget sometimes that they're 50-something years old because I'm thinking of them still as my young daughters. They're not that young. <laughs> I don't think it's all that one. But sometimes I truly forget that they are 50-plus years. I said, yo, come on. It used to be they just flopped down on the floor, you know, do what they got to do and get up. Now I find them dragging chairs in the room. You need a chair? Honey, yes, I'm 50. Yes, I do. I can't get up off that floor. I said, you can't. At my age, I was rolling around getting up, doing everything I wanted to do, but nothing. I mean, if I could go back 50 years, I mean, I mean, 50 years old, I had it made. I really did. But then I look at them and I think something is missing with this generation of people because they, they seem not to be able to have the same spunk, if you will, what we had. That we got to get up and do But we came up doing hard work. We didn't have a computer. Some of the problem is that... Uh, our society has made it easy for you to sit on your buns and push a button. Over a period of time, that's all you do. Well, if you get up and have to pick up a mop, you say, whoa. Well, all you do is sit at a desk and do this. All day long. Now they're making desks. If you want to, you can have a stand-up desk. And so I had Nisa order her one the other day. And, and it's really nice because you can push it down and sit down. And when you get ready to get up, you can just raise it up. Really nice. <laughs> but I said, they're tired of nothing. There ain't been no real exercise today. Just tired. And I hear it a lot. Shut up, Juana. I hear it a lot. So constant. And it's not long. Now, they'll get up tomorrow. Wanna spend the night with me on Sunday night. Ever since Charles died, one of the kids stay all night. But <clears throat> Sunday's her night. And so she won't get up real early. And, and Nisi, uh, the other two, Nisi and Lisa, they drag in at any time. 9.30, quarter to 10, 10 o'clock. I said, where's those little old women at? <laughs> and finally they come in. And you know what they do? Because my bed is unmade when they get there. They crawl up in the bed. I said, it's time to work. You, two, you got here at 10 o'clock and crawled in the bed? Come on, not now. And, they sit there, and then they try to blame me and say, Mom, <laughs> Mom, Mama's called us all morning. Come here, I need this. Bring this to me. Bring this. <laughs> And I do call for some things, true enough. <laughs> but if you were moving like you should move, it would, you still could get all your stuff done. Yes. And, and so, you, and, and you know what I'm saying? Uh, one morning we come over, let's put one of those sleeping pills in mama's, uh, <laughs> in, mama, in mama's food so that she can sleep until we're done. <laughs> Is that right? I said, really? Yeah, we're going to put something in your food to lay you down so you got to sleep, sleep and don't bother nobody. But that really ain't the problem. It really ain't. I mean, they still could get it done. I'm saying bring me this and bring me that. And, I, and you know what? After seven children, I should be saying bring me this. Yes. And you know what? <laughs> they used to say to me, now niece is doing it to Kyle, bless your heart. Um. We're sitting right here in the chair. The TV remote is right there. And we'll call somebody, come here. Get that remote control for me. Are you kidding me? It's right there. Yeah. And then they whisper behind your back and say, child, she could have got up and got that remote control. <laughs> but by the time we come to this time in our life, we don't feel like moving to the next. At least I don't feel like moving over there getting I sit there and think, I need to get that remote. <laughs> I need that remote. And that's, I keep telling myself that. And that's why I just, I just discover, call them in here. <laughs> and let them do it. But, and, and now she's doing it to Kyle. And so I, I used to say, well, why don't mama just get up and do it? Now she's calling Kyle. Uh, if, if I'm home on Wednesday night or for, uh, for whatever reason, she said, I brought Kyle because I need a runner. 
I need somebody who can run for things because I can't be running around here looking for stuff and going here and going there. So he's the runner. But I'm telling you, for, as a whole, we need to be sure that we are constantly doing something that keeps us exercising, moving, and feeling good, and making, setting goals, and reaching them. Reaching them. So you got to look at your life and say, what am I doing besides just sitting around gossiping? All I do is think about other people's business. Why did they do this and why did they do that? That's all I think about. We need to turn our mind on God and say, Lord, what would you have me to do today? Would you let somebody pass my way that I can testify to them, that I can, that I can to tell them about you? I bet you half of this church don't even think of that in the morning. Who, who, Lord, I want a soul today that's looking for you. Help me to cross paths with them. That I might be able to do something to help them. You'll be surprised when you do something good, as I said this morning, for somebody else besides yourself. It's a good feeling, and you get this unbelievable oh, uh, oh, energy, this surge, yeah, this surge. Oh, I feel better. I feel good. Laying around won't get it, won't get it. See, listen to this. Where, where no wood is, there is... There the fire goeth out. So where there is no tailbearer, the strife ceases. So tell, gossip is like wood and fire being put together. And so it causes a fire. It causes confusion. It causes pain to people. So what I need to do is say, you know what? I'm not going to spend my life or my day just talking about things just Crazy things that make no difference. See, what did he say? Behold, this was the iniquity of thy sister Sodom, pride, fullness of bread, and abundance of idleness, neither did she strengthen the hand of the poor and needy. That's what happened to Sodom and Gomorrah. They got just lazy doing nothing, and they, and they had a spirit of pride. Pride itself will wear you out. Get rid of that. He said, but fullness of bread, plenty to eat. Oh, I'm so full. Did you stop? Did you, when you felt the first thing that happened to you says you're full, did you just go past that? I have heard that. Well, I don't care if I am full. I'm eating that pie. But if I'm too full for it, why don't I just say I'm not going to do that? Oh, there's always room for pie or cake. Always room for that. And just sitting around, oh, I'm so miserable. I mean, I got gas, <laughs> indigestion, all kind of stuff. Just sitting around doing that. You know you'll get more gas sitting around than you would moving? That's the truth. It's full of gas. Everywhere you go, you blowing up things. <laughs> That's because you sit too long. Your intestines is all balled up and laying there, and they can't stretch out, and they just fill up with gas. After a while, people are running for cover. It's like I don't believe this. Move around so that something is being accomplished in a day that I'm not dealing with the same old stuff. See, Sodom. Fullness of bread and idleness. Because most people, they get too full. The very next thing they do is what? I don't take a nap. In a few minutes, I got to lay down and take a nap. See? If you make up in your mind that I've got to be a person that has something constructive to do in my life every day. Every day. And you know what? I have gotten up and felt really tired, and I pushed myself to do what I didn't feel like doing. You got to be willing to do that. Keep pushing. And say, today will be a better day than yesterday. Why? Because to make things happen requires energy. It requires time. It requires effort on your part. But if you don't get up, nothing gets done. So we talk about it, but we don't do nothing with it. See, I'm saying to you tonight, 
when he sent all those people into the vineyard, he just kept saying, go work. Go in the vineyard. Go work. He didn't say go there and sit down and I'll give you something. He said, go work. See, that's a bad word to a lot of people. Work. That's why they get fired from jobs. They don't want to work. And that's why they don't get, and they're late getting there because they stayed in the bed too late. Sleeping. Instead of getting up early. Staying up. You ever seen people oh, really didn't do that much, but, but the next morning they felt the need to, sli- to sleep in. You sleeping in? Why? I don't know. Yesterday, boy, it was a tough day. You're sleeping in. Nothing's worse than a man sleeping in. All woman. Solomon talked about the virtuous woman. She gets up while it's still night. Uh, before day in the morning, she begins to prepare and work for her household for that day. So uh, she's uh, a virtuous woman is not laying around doing nothing. She's busy. She's always got something else she's going to do, something else she's involved with. She's a businesswoman. She knows how to make things happen. She knows how to take care of business. Be surprised at the people that don't know how to take care of business. Because they, don't, they, they, they just don't go that way. You know, that, that's too much. You know, if I don't have to do it, I won't do it. I tell people that are married, quit letting your husband do everything for you. You need to know how to do some things for yourself. If you don't, if he suddenly dies, what's going to happen? We took care of a woman that got married, Leanna Graham. She got married when she was, was she 14? 14 years old. And this husband she had did everything. You shouldn't marry as a girl anyway. That's a kid. But she done everything. He done everything for her. She couldn't write a check. She couldn't balance a checkbook. She couldn't handle money, period. Under no, she never did anything for herself. He did all, everything. Not good. Not good. As a result of that, she was a burden to us. Me and Daisy was in there trying to help her to do this. Okay, you can't do this. And, and we were shocked that when she started adding up stuff that she couldn't even add. She was how old when he died? About 50-something. Couldn't even add. Almost remind me of my sister. She tried to... Of course, well, she's, she was mentally unbalanced, but um, she, she going to add up something. And, and you know how you put 10, 10, 10, and you put the one here, and you put another one here, and a zero, one here, and zero. She always started at the zero with the next one. <laughs> and then she started the next one with a zero. And so by the time she's trying to add up something, it's running across the page like this. I said, baby, you have to put that in line. I was always so frustrated thinking, what's wrong with you? I mean, we went to school. Everybody should know how to add and subtract and do a little division here and there. But if somebody had explained to me that something was wrong with my sister, I would have said, oh, that's why she's doing that. Arlene is so tickled right now. But I'm telling you. And so I'm trying to stand, and that's the way you see people doing things, or, or they can't really right well so you can't know you don't know what it is and so I'm looking at my sister saying you're not going to balance a checkbook or anything with 10 10 10 you're going behind you you under every O instead of under the one that's tragic and then you know what we can learn how to do a lot of things we're too lazy to learn we're too lazy to apply ourselves to it and say you know what I need to learn this. If you don't know how to do it, of course, when you're mentally somehow uh, uh, not, I mean, your mind's not very strong and, and mentally you don't grasp things very easy, it's hard for some people to learn. Very hard. And that's what my sister was, very hard to learn. And I used to get so angry because they made me, uh, sit down with your sister and help her with that. I thought, I cannot help her. This is not working. But tell me that she's mentally unbalanced. I don't know that she is. Uh, She's retarded. And I'm thinking, tell me she's retarded. Then I can understand why her her tens is going all across the paper. But at least tell it to me. They wouldn't tell me that. And so I would say, what's wrong with you? 
He said, I don't know, Rose. <laughs> Something's wrong with you, but nobody's telling me, so what am I supposed to do? <laughs> you don't just automatically know that, I mean, I can do this. I can read. What's wrong with you? And then they were yelling at me and said, quit yelling at that girl in there. I'm saying you can surely read spot run run. That, was, that, that book was the most e easy reading book that you could get in school about Spot and Jane. All, uh, uh, those are the old as I am, no doubt you s recognize Spot. And I said, okay, read this line right here. Uh, I said, this says Spot, run, run. I said, you don't remember Spot? Yeah, I remember Spot. <laughs> Say it, Spot. Now go ahead to the next word. I said, run, run. <laughs> Get it. Come on, you're wasting my time. You want me to deal with this? I don't know how to deal with it. I've never been taught how to deal with it. See? But you, you, God wants to reach out to people and teach them and give them some understanding and some wisdom how to do things. They don't want it. It requires you to think. I got to think. And then people don't want to think. So I just said I don't know how. Well, learn how. There's a lot of things that we say we can't do, we could do if we apply ourselves. If you apply yourself, you can learn that. And move on. And I often say to the Lord, thank you for not letting me be born Hannah. What a handicapped way to live your life. And as I watched her as she grew, because we're only a year and a day apart, as I watched her as she grew, and her, her getting older made no, absolute no difference. The same slow to comprehend, to understand was there. Now she has to always have somebody with her. And I said, God, thank you for thinking about me. Because I wouldn't have wanted to be her. How difficult it must be. See, but God is trying to teach you, and you will not even apply yourself. The word says study to show thyself. A work that need not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Rightly dividing is study. If you don't like to study, that means I got to think. Thinking is good when you think right. It is good. See, listen to this. Oh, uh, where am I at? Says the younger women, uh, but the younger widows refuse, for when they have begun to wax wanton against Christ, they will marry, having damnation because they have cast off their first faith. And with them they learn to be idle, wandering about from house to house. And not only idle, but tattlers also, and busybodies, speaking things which they ought not. Younger women, these are young widows. And, but he said, here's what I would they do. I will therefore let the younger women marry, bear children, guide the house, give not occasion to the adversary, which is the devil, to speak reproachfully. For some are already turned aside after Satan. He says, I want the child get married and have some babies and have to take care of the house. That won't leave you no time to gossip. They were tattling, running from house to house. He said, you need to get married. You need to have some babies. And then some of them will do that and sit around and fill them. Have babies. Babies stink and they stink. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous how little that we're willing to apply ourselves uh, that we might be better. And you can be. I've always been a person that want to learn. Tell me that. But I was always a person that could grab it really quickly. That's why I guess I, should, I couldn't understand my sister because I always, I could watch something and learn it. And you didn't have to tell me three or four times, just show me that one thing. You show it to me, I got it. That doesn't apply to everybody. That means I got to apply myself a little bit more because I don't grasp things that fast. And that's true with a lot of people. But you can get better if you're willing to apply yourself, if you're willing to study, if you're willing to give yourself uh, over to God and to the place of future a uh, place that you want to go, things that you want to do, things you want to accomplish. People live their whole life not accomplishing jack. 
And when they, and when they die, they want somebody to say a lot about them when they're dead, and they never did nothing. There's nothing to say. But what way did you touch somebody's life or some person or whatever, and as a result of you passing through their life, something changed because we're willing to get up and work and make things happen. you got to learn to do that. Don't spend your life doing nothing but sitting around. Just sit there and take a little nod all day. Uh, David was telling me when we went to see him, he said, he said, Mama, Sarah was sitting over in that chair. He said, all she did was. <laughs> he said, she's, they rolled her in, she sat down. <laughs> he said, I don't want to go out like that. <laughs> he said, I'm telling you, she, just, she slept the whole time. And he said, Mama, I watched her. I thought, I don't want to look like that. I want to be up and doing something. I don't want you to sit me in a chair. It's unbelievable. And that's true for a lot of people. Push them in. You get nothing else. They didn't accomplish nothing. Their lives has not been blessed. They're in the same place that they're always in. Nothing happened. I hate to talk to people and they go to sleep while you're talking. It's true. See? You look at them and think, are you awake? Are you listening to what I'm saying? Go ahead. Sleep. I don't like sleepyhead people. I can get turned off real fast to that one. You better not wake them up past their bedtime till 9 o'clock, 8 o'clock, 7 o'clock. Oh, my God, I'm so sleepy. I got to get in bed. Did you sleep last night? Of course I slept last night. This is another day of laziness. <laughs> Another day. You know who make great, great musicians? It's people who work at it and give it everything they got. I told, I told teacher, I said, shake your hair. Turn that piano up, honey. I pulled my guitar back out. I'm thinking I'm going to try to learn right now. I pulled it back out the other day. It's still sitting in the same spot I brought it home in. And I said, I'm going to get that in prayer time. I'm going to take uh, maybe 30 minutes of prayer time and say, Lord, teach me how to play this thing. I believe I can play it. But, honey, you, you ain't seen somebody breaking it down and getting with it and putting in the energy. Oh, my God. I used to want to play the piano when I was a little girl because I would never get one because they couldn't afford it. So our, our church would come on at night, uh, Kenley Temple singing, It's a Highway to Heaven. None can walk up there but the pure and heart. So when they come on, I sit at the kitchen table. I'm telling you, you couldn't tell me I didn't have a piano. I mean, I was beating that table to death. Everybody walking past me, and I'm still beating the table. I wanted to play so bad. I loved it. So I made my kitchen table the piano. So when the broadcast came on, I sat down, pulled up my chair like I was a musician, and boy, my hand, my finger were tired, but boy, I was tearing it up. Always wanted to play. So I thought, well, since I had children, I'll just get a piano and I'll let them learn. That'll be part of my dream. Sorry. <laughs> I, had the, I had the music teacher come into the house. They didn't even have to go to the studio. And you know what they did? I don't want to play. I said, why don't you want to play? I don't want to. I'm just not interested. I wanted at least one musician, none. So I said to Kyle one day, I said, Kyle, I said, would you like to play an instrument? He said, no way. <laughs> I said, what is this? <laughs> no, right off bat, didn't try to fix it, nothing. no, no way. <laughs> so I said the other day, I said, it's about time for me to learn how to play that guitar. Honey, if God anoints me to play that guitar, let me tell you something. You ain't going to even hear Joe over there. <laughs> I will tear that thing up. You know why? Because I wouldn't care about the energy and the time it takes, but I got to learn it quick because I'll get bored with things I don't learn quick. And I'm not musically inclined just to say, oh, I know how to do this. I mean, some people are just gifted for that. I'm not gifted for it, but I believe I can learn it. See? So it's still sitting there. I haven't moved it yet. 
leaning up against the cabinet, all the good stuff with it. But I'm going to pull it out. And prayer time, Lord, while I'm before you, every 30 minutes I need you to teach me something. Because you know I'm going to give it everything I got. I saw this woman one day that was on uh, some, I think it was one of Michael Jackson's, uh, uh, his last, so be last tour, last, uh, pro, uh, last show that he had. And that woman was tearing that guitar up. I kid you not. And she was, I mean, she was all into it, breaking it down and stooping down. And, and all of a sudden I thought, I need to pray, play for God like that. Because Joe, he can play that guitar. But you know what? I mean, he'd be tearing it up. He'd look just like this. <laughs> I'm thinking, get weird. Let your face get frowned up and everything and break it on down. That boy be tearing that thing up. And look here. I'm thinking, Joe, break it down. Kneel, bow a little bit. Uh, 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 you know, you know uh, the late B.B. King, that man could play Lucille. That man, his face was like. I mean, he was playing that guitar. I like to see musicians that get involved. Because I'm telling you, the more involved you get, the greater it's going to become. It's true. Let loose and let God. And don't be afraid of what you don't know. Let him teach you. It changes things. You sitting here today and say, you know what? Am I just idly spending my whole life and doing nothing with it? Am I in the same place I was years ago? Nothing changed? That's what you got to look at. Where am I at? Where have I grown? Have I got better? I told them when I was in the car and heard that uh, song about if I labor, God's going to give me a crown. I thought, I said, and then I heard the guitar section, and I said, oh, y'all should let Joe play that. He tore it up with a straight face. <laughs> Countenance never changed. You say, is he playing? Yeah. <laughs> but when you see it, break down and people are getting involved and, and I feel it. You got to feel it. Express yourself. Some people don't want to, I, I find people sometimes if you ask them a question, they don't really want to answer because it takes, I got to think, what do you want? Come on. Let's be the best that we can be for the kingdom. Give it 100%. Spend your life busy. Involved in doing something. Spend your life that way. So when, when the end of the road comes, that to the very end, you are still doing what you need to do. I didn't just stop here. I wanted to go further. I want to become better. And you can. Every person in here can. You can do things you never dreamed you could do because you know what? You told yourself, uh, I, well, I'm, not a, I'm not a musician. It doesn't matter whether you want or not. It's whether you want to be one or not. This is where I want to go. See, so get into the vineyard. That's why you don't get more souls than you get. It's work. He said go in the vineyard and work. That means exertion of, of your energy and your strength. Getting involved, doing everything I can do to make it happen. You can. Until the day you die, you should be saying, I'm going to do everything I can to improve my life day by day until I come to the end and know that I did a good job. Know that I accomplished something. Busy bodies stir up strife. People that run around talking about everybody, they stir, stir, stir up strife. Listen, Paul said, for we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly, working not at all, but are busy bodies. They ain't working, but they're busy bodies in your business. Nothing eats me more than somebody ask you something personal. That ain't none of your business. And you just put it out there and say, you know, I just wanted to ask you this. I've been wanting to ask you this for a long time. Well, are those eyelashes yours? <laughs> they're mine if I grew them. They're mine if I bought them. <laughs> they're still mine. Just nosy. Busybody. See? 
And he says, goes further to say, but let none of you suffer as a member or as a thief or as an evildoer or as a busybody in other men's matters. None of you become that. It's not your business. Why is it important? Anything that you're doing in your life that, that it doesn't affect me in some kind of way, I have no business getting into it. Why do I want to know? Don't matter to me. I mean, I got enough of my own issues to take care of and business to take care of. I don't have time to do that. But get up. Listen to what the scripture says. He also that is slowful in his work is brother to him that is a great waster. So slowful, lazy people are also people that are, they waste a lot because they too lazy to do anything by trying to hold on to something or make do something with what they've got. So if he is slowful, if he's lazy, he is gonna be a person that wastes a lot of stuff. I think about I was thinking about people the other day in the church, and I thought, God, uh, some people don't have any money simply for the fact that they they never managed it. You gotta manage money. You don't just get it and sit around, put it in your pocket, and hit the road every time. You got to manage it for it to work. And that a lot of times, that's what happens. They don't manage well. But if you manage it and know how, learn how, so I never did know how to, how to do that. You can manage that and learn that. Spur of the moment people that do things on spur of the moment with money, I'll show you a broke person. Spur of the moment. Without any forethought whatsoever. See? They never amount to nothing. They never keep nothing. They never have nothing for tomorrow. All because they couldn't manage what they got today. You got to be able to manage that. Learn how to manage. We don't even want to learn it. So you don't know it? I can, shoot, I can apply it. I can study it. Could you tell me what you know about it so I can do it? You'll go a long, long way. Juana, Nisi, Lisa, all three girls manage money. All of them, not a one. When I tell you down to the penny, whatever it is, they manage it well. Every person in this church needs to say, when God bless you, now manage what he bless you with. Give him what belongs to him and manage the rest. You'll be surprised how far to go. But you're going to have to apply yourself. You're going to have to work at it. You got to say no to some things. And, and so that you're able to do some other things down the road. Can't do everything in one day. Can't happen. Think about that. So listen. He said, I went by the field of the slothful and by the vineyard of the man void of understanding. And lo, it was all grown over with thorns and thistles, had covered the face thereof, and the stone wall thereof was broken down. He said, I went by the house of the slothful, the people that's lazy. And they hadn't done nothing in the yard. Everything was there the way it was. It looked a mess. They did nothing with it. Because number one, I'm not getting out there and push that lawn more. That's I mean, that's work. Well, if ain't nobody else to do it, somebody got to push it. So think about it. So he said, when I, saw the, when I saw the vineyard, he said, it was all grown over. I said, dandelions covering the whole cotton picking yard. And they think they're growing uh, uh, some yellow flowers. Those are weeds. It's not a yellow flower. See? And he said, and the stone wall there, it was broke down. They never repair anything. They never fix anything. I believe what God gives us uh, or entrusts things into our hand, he also expects us to be a good manager and a good steward. How do you manage? I learn how. But in most cases... You can't teach people that. They don't want, when I got some money, don't teach me nothing. When I'm broke, now teach me. Oh, that's going to be a tough road to hold right there. See? Take a moment. Put it back. Don't, some people are not content unless every penny is gone. I got a, I got a raise, a bonus, I spent it all. Felt so good after that was over. But what's for tomorrow? What's for the next day? And the next day, learn how to manage. You can go a long way in life if you don't just throw everything to the wind. I hope you'll take this and realize he told them to go in the vineyard and work because they needed to be doing something, not just standing around. So ask 
look at your life and say, what are you doing? Oh, I've got a good job. I'm going to have to quit that job. Why? They now want you to be in by seven. I, I'm, oh honey, I'm just getting out of the bed at eight. Or turn it down for that reason. Lazy. I'd rather lay up and sleep and eat. And I'm really accomplishing something. Get nothing accomplished. You know what? The more you eat when you're trying to work, the more, the, the more tired you get. It's good that you have fasting days. Uh, your sister Rose, don't go down that road. Yeah, it's, but it's good. Because the minute you eat food, you start feeling tired. Energy's drained. But if you say, I can get this done and then take some time out, that's good. So take this and say to yourself, I'm getting ready to quit being lazy. Don't go out of here tonight telling, well, I'm not a lazy person. I'm just one of these persons that do such and such. And yeah, you're lazy. Accept that. Say, I'm going to change it. I'm going to go into the vineyard and work and whatever's right, I'll pay you for it. That's what he says. Get up and do it. Whether you feel like it or not, get up and work out. Get up, you don't feel like it. You think I feel like working out? No. And sometimes I'm half mad when I'm going to do it. I'm glad ain't no workout stuff in heaven. That's what I tell myself. But get up. If you want to keep breathing and keep moving, you better get up, do something. Sit there all day and eat fattening food. Or next day, eat fattening food. The next day, fattening food. The next day. So did you work out? Didn't have time this week. You had time to eat. You got time to work out. And people love, they can give you all kinds of excuses, all kinds. Make up in your mind, I'm going to change this. After this message tonight, I'm going to become smart. I'm going to be a, a, work, a person that works and put in the time that I need to put in, accomplish what I need to accomplish. You can do it with God, whatever it takes. Yeah, I left that job. Why did you leave it? They got me doing two or three people's work. Were you getting paid? Not enough. Well, somebody would take your job and wouldn't complain about it. Make it work. Make it work. Stand up.